I woke up at 3 a.m. late or early, depending on what you believe. At the foot of my bed, my angel hovered, shimmering with ethereal light, strong bright light, the kind that helicopters use, but holier. <laughs> the angel's glow filled the whole room. She or he or it was, as I'd been told, genderless and typically boringly blonde and white, as angels often must appear to typical and boring white people. <laughs> its beauty was a force, though. It pushed me down and embraced me at the same time. I lay there in its warmth, reclaimed and, and groggy. Get up, the angel said. I've got a little time and I want to watch a horror movie. <laughs> I shielded my eyes. Who, who are you? For fuck's sake. The angel looked at me like if I was making it repeat its name for the fourth time. I'm your angel. Who else would I be? You want to watch a, a horror movie? Yes, I don't understand them. I need someone to explain. We spent considerable time sifting through the Netflix. Horror movies are generally awful, I explain. Netflix has the worst of the worst. <laughs> How could I find one for an angel? The Exorcist was definitely out. I felt nervous watching that one before I had evidence to believe in anything. It always felt kind of like I was tempting fate. This brought up an old thought of mine, though, about how nice it would be to make custom instant view cues in Netflix. Cues I could name so I could easily find appropriate movies for situations. Perhaps one named Movies for Watching with a Girlfriend, and another named Movies for When You Are Drunk. That way, I wouldn't be picking through an embarrassing suggested things list all the time. The angel thought that was a good idea, and in some ways that felt very rewarding. Then the angel said, you could have already had a queue lined up called horror movies to show to my angel when it appears. And then you'd click right on it. That didn't feel as rewarding. Eventually we settled on dead snow, red versus dead, about Nazi zombies stalking a group of cabin bound teenagers. We watched in total silence I tried to make a few jokes early, but the angel shushed me. <laughs> but he, she, or it left. But before he, she, or it, it left, it gave Dead Snow three stars, <laughs> which was higher than I would have. And it marked it on my account. <laughs> but I wasn't about to question its judgment. <laughs> so that's one. <laughs> It's called Thanks, Dad. Yeah, it's just, I like it better over here. My dad told me if I thought impure thoughts while the tooth was missing, that a tiny little trickster finger would grow in its place. <laughs> the finger, he said, would flick the food out of my mouth before I could finish chewing it. It seemed hard to believe, but my dad sure dribbled a lot of food down the front of his own shirt. So I grew scared of wriggling demon mouth fingers. And I also was troubled by what other impure things my dad must have thought about. Years later, I would see my father for what he really was, a slob and a liar. Now he has dentures. I have dentures. We both have dentures. One old man visiting another telling each other nothing, our tongues clicking, our clothes grubby, and our immaculate teeth bared. <laughs> Alright, one more. Quick one. When he realized he wouldn't be able to read everything, he became a lot more forgiving of himself if he decided to stop reading a book midway through. This had been a source of deep guilt before, as if a book equaled an obligation and quitting was quitting on a duty. But he felt so much more relieved when he let himself stop reading whenever he felt like it. Over time, he felt the same way about short stories, and then magazine articles, and then paragraphs. <laughs> and eventually, if a sentence didn't grab him, he'd just scan to the next sentence. <laughs> Listening became aggravating. He thought, 
get to the point early and over again, sometimes two or three times within the point. <laughs> Every so often, then so often, he'd walk away in the middle of a conversation, which struck some as absent-minded until he started leaving during introductions. <laughs> he spoke in chopped sentences, either talk less or make your conclusion short. Otherwise, you'll get interrupted by someone whose brain is so cluttered with long ideas that they are afraid they will forget what they have to say before they can say it, he thought. Or he thought he thought. Frankly, thoughts like this one lasted too long to think. <laughs> he had a boss who said, if you're going to be wrong, be wrong loudly. Everyone hated this boss. <laughs> Yet, the idea stuck with him. If you're going to be wrong, be wrong loudly. It had to have some truth to it, otherwise it wouldn't be so easy to remember. 